I've been playing on these Jody Jazz metal tenor mouthpieces since January, and I need your help. J Metcalf here from bettersax.com. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing and playtesting these four outstanding Jody Jazz tenor sax mouthpieces. And you guessed it, there's going to be a giveaway contest. Winners will get their choice of any Jody Jazz tenor sax mouthpiece in their desired tip opening. More on that in a little bit. First, I want to thank all of you, my viewers, for the continued support these last few years. We're nearing the 200,000 subscriber mark, and we're going to celebrate that with another big giveaway contest with some very cool prizes. So if you're not yet subscribed, now's the time to click that button and drop me one of these. If you like saxophone mouthpiece review videos and giveaways like the one you're about to watch all the way through to the end. Before we get started, I want to talk about two important things with you. But if you want to skip over all the blah, blah, blah and get straight into the doobie doobie doobie, I put chapter markers in this video so you can jump around to the parts that interest you most. The first thing I want to address is the question many of you may have, and that's, is this sponsored content? Am I being paid by the companies whose saxophones, mouthpieces, and accessories I review? And the answer is no. All of the videos on this channel are made independently, and I don't accept payment for any video content. Whatever I say is my own thoughts and opinions. I suppose that some people, when they hear a positive review of something, they immediately think it's some type of commercial or paid advertisement, but it's more like I only make videos about things that I really like or things that I think will be of some sort of value to you, my audience. If I were making sponsored content or paid advertising, I would have to disclose that according to YouTube's policy and FTC regulations. Now, I do often receive samples of the items I'm reviewing and then keep them, but I'm not running this YouTube channel to get free saxophone mouthpieces. Also, as you can see, I don't sell them afterwards. I keep them so that I can do further comparison videos down the road and answer the many questions I get about mouthpieces from my viewers. The links I put in the description are often affiliate links, meaning I could earn a commission if someone were to purchase something using one of those links. I think of everyone who watches my channel as my students, my friends and colleagues, and your trust is very important to me. The second thing I want to talk about is why am I reviewing all of these mouthpieces? At first, it was a bit tricky playing so many unfamiliar mouthpieces, but it got easier and easier over time. And after about a year of switching mouthpieces just about every day, there was an unintended consequence. It's actually helped me improve my sound and control on the saxophone overall. Not because I have a lot of mouthpieces. Buying a lot of mouthpieces won't make you sound better, but it's because I'm practicing and playing on these mouthpieces and getting outside of my comfort zone all the time. This helps me learn more about my embouchure, use of air, read choices, sound, and just about every aspect of playing. By changing mouthpieces almost daily, I'm increasing my own flexibility and ability to adapt. So while the conventional wisdom has always been to get one mouthpiece and stick with it for a long time while you develop your sound and control and embouchure, this experience has taught me that maybe it can be very beneficial for certain players to switch things up a lot. Uh, and you might actually develop more in the same amount of time by constantly changing things. Anyway, that's been my experience for most developing players. I would still recommend getting one good solid mouthpiece and sticking with it for a while. Okay, enough blah, blah. Let's talk about the mouthpieces we're gonna hear. Here are the four metal Jody Jazz tenor sax mouthpieces. In order of darkest to brightest, you've got the DV New York, the DV Chicago, the DV, and then the Super Jet. I'm gonna play the first eight bars of the ballad, My Foolish Heart, on each one of these, starting with the DV New York. <laughs> This mouthpiece is the darkest of the four, but I wouldn't characterize it as a dark mouthpiece since it has a nice sizzle and edge to the sound. It also has power, but can play beautiful subtone 
very easily. It's more spread than the others, but still retains a very solid core to the sound. Yes, the way I talk about it, it sounds like it's the perfect mouthpiece. Maybe it is for me. You'll notice it has the double window on the table, like all the Jody Jazz DV mouthpieces, and that it has a straight low baffle. Beautiful gold plating with no bite plate. It also has straight sidewalls that open up to a large, somewhat fluted chamber. The rails and tip are very thin and precise. Every read I put on this mouthpiece seems to make a very nice connection. At the beginning of this video, I told you I needed your help, and that's because I'm torn between the DV New York and the DV Chicago that I'm about to play for you. So please have a careful listen and let me know in the comments which one of those two you prefer and why. Here's another clip of me playing something that goes a bit into the higher register. It comes from the Chad LB book, 20 Melodic Cell Etudes. If you're looking for some advanced practice material, I recommend checking out some of the PDF packages they have over at jazzlessonvideos.com. If you use the coupon code BETTERSAX, you'll save five bucks on anything over there. The DV New York sells for $650, and I put links in the description below to this one and all the other mouthpieces where you can find out more information or order one directly. Now let's have a listen to the DV Chicago. <laughs> I've been playing both the DV New York and the DV Chicago on all my gigs this summer. There haven't been very many, but for me, that's the ultimate test of a mouthpiece. It's one thing to mess around with something at home, but when you take it on stage with you, that's where things get serious. That's when stuff you might not notice in the practice room can appear, like, can I project enough with this mouthpiece while I'm playing with a loud band at an outdoor concert? Or can I maintain control with this mouthpiece in an acoustic jazz setting at low volumes. Both of these mouthpieces performed really well for me on my gigs. I use them in both loud and soft situations. They're both fun to play and I like the sound I'm getting with both of them. So I'm just curious what you guys think. Please let me know in the comments. Once again, we have the double window table, the very thin and precise sidewalls and tip. The obvious difference is that this one is in a beautiful silver plating, but when you look inside, you see this very unique baffle design. I've never seen this before. It's like the fluted chamber of the DV New York has been extended almost all the way to the tip of the mouthpiece. The sidewalls are scooped out a little bit more than the DV New York and the baffle rolls over into a large chamber. The result for me is a bit more power and edge to the sound while still maintaining control. If you're looking for something that can help you get that Texas tenor sound, it's a bit brash and in your face, yet still play beautifully on ballads, the DV Chicago is definitely worth checking out. Have another listen and don't forget to let me know in the comments which one you prefer. The DV Chicago sells for $650. Moving on to the classic DV, let's hear what that one sounds like on the ballad. For this clip, I did use a softer read, a two and a half, because it just felt better. <laughs> The Jody Jazz DV is a more contemporary sounding mouthpiece for me. The sound is 
more focused and less spread than the DV Chicago and the DV New York. The main difference here being the raised step baffle that drops into the chamber with this bullet shape. It's got straight sidewalls all the way, same meticulous rails and tip 24 karat gold plating and a bite plate. This is a great do anything all around mouthpiece in my opinion. You can be at ease in contemporary playing situations as well as with traditional jazz settings. It provides tons of power, projection, and control at all volume levels over the entire range of the saxophone. It definitely sits on the brighter end of the spectrum, so if you play pop, rock, smooth jazz, funk, stuff like that, but also play traditional jazz, this could be a good choice for you. Let's have another listen. DV sells for $595. The brightest of the four metal mouthpieces from Jody Jazz is the Super Jet. This one is designed specifically for contemporary players who want the maximum projection and power without sacrificing a beautiful tone. You can play ballads on these two. Have a listen. <laughs> As you can hear, this mouthpiece really wants to play loud, but the sound has a fatness and a roundness to it despite all that power and projection. Once again, I did use a softer two and a half reed for that clip just because it felt more comfortable. This style mouthpiece is the furthest outside of my personal comfort zone, and that's just because I am normally going for a more traditional jazz sound. But if I were in a situation where I really needed to cut through the mix, this is the mouthpiece I would grab as well as my earplugs because it does play significantly louder than the other ones. This design differs from the DV series mouthpieces. There is no secondary window, but I like how the name Superjet is engraved on the table. It's got a matte silver plating, which looks cool and is gonna tarnish in a way that makes it look kind of vintage to me, which I like. It has a steep step baffle that drops down once a bit before the chamber and then drops down again into a smaller chamber with a bullet shape similar to the DV. Same straight sidewalls and thin tip and side rails that are all immaculate. I could get used to playing on this mouthpiece, but it doesn't really fit the style of the gigs that I normally do, and it might make me go deaf. I use earplugs for all practice sessions, but I might have to double up with this one. It is really loud. But I know that for a lot of contemporary saxophone players, this might be the exact mouthpiece to get the job done. Let's have another listen. The Jody Jazz Superjet sells for $395. If you are playing on any of these Jody Jazz metal mouthpieces, please let us know in the comments below your experiences with them and how they've held up for you over time. Thanks to Jody Jazz for providing these mouthpieces so that I could make this video. I've got another one coming soon where we're gonna be looking at their hard rubber mouthpieces. Right now, let's get into the giveaway contest though. This week, we're giving away two brand new Jody Jazz tenor saxophone mouthpieces. The winners can choose from any of their available mouthpieces, the metal ones, the hard rubber ones, and of course you get your choice of tip opening. The third place winner is gonna receive one of these Jody Jazz Power Ring ligatures to fit any mouthpiece you want. I put a link in the description below to the contest page where you can sign into the app and enter the contest. All you need is an email address, but you can also get bonus entries by doing things like visiting Better Sax and Jody Jazz on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. While you're there, you're really gonna want to follow those pages for all of the great free saxophone content that they're putting out almost every day. Winners will be announced next week on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks for watching and good luck in the contest.